Christmas is right around the corner, everybody. There are plenty of movies to bring up during this season, but almost nothing comes close to the hilarity of 1989's Christmas Vacation. What else has dead cats, chemical toilets, and a lot of sap? So sit back, grab some eggnog, and learn what you didn't know about Christmas Vacation. Clark Griswold's outbursts make the vacation movies what they are. A family man trying to keep his composure while everything falls apart around him is comedy gold. One example of this in the film is when Clark first tries to set up his Christmas lights. After trying for days to make his house the brightest on the street, Clark can't seem to get his lights to turn on. In his frustration, he screams and punches the lawn ornaments, including a plastic Santa Claus. In Chevy Chase's rage, he ended up breaking his pinky on the fake decoration. In true movie fashion, this take ended up in the final film, although Chase resorted to only kicking the plastic ornaments after that. A second tirade worth mentioning is Clark's rant about his boss, Mr. Shirley. After being snubbed on his Christmas bonus, Clark delivers one of the best scenes in the film. He calls him everything under the sun. I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing. With all these insults, it's hard to imagine Chevy Chase was able to remember his lines. Well, he didn't. The actors off screen actually had signs around their necks with different sections of the scripted rant available for Chase to read. If you watch closely, you can see Chevy Chase look from character to character as he delivers the incredible scene. Did you know Chris Columbus was originally set to direct Christmas Vacation? It would have been his third directing job after Adventures in Babysitting and Heartbreak Hotel. But early into production, Columbus decided Chevy Chase was too difficult to work with and dropped out of the project. Columbus was worried the decision to drop out would end his career. But, luckily for him, John Hughes brought him on to direct Home Alone the following year. The directing role eventually went to Jeremiah Chechik. He had only worked on commercials and music videos up until this point, but his name made the rounds in Hollywood after Stanley Kubrick joked about how much he loved his work. Speaking of Jeremiah Chechik, did you know the director actually makes an appearance in the film? That's right, he's on the cover of the People magazine Clark reads in bed after getting sap all over his fingers. It was a fake People magazine made for the film, but... In case you didn't know what he looked like, there you go. After being asked to write another vacation film, John Hughes based his script off a story he wrote for National Lampoon magazine. The story was called Christmas 59, and he turned it into a screenplay. It was his second vacation story to be published in the magazine, the first being Vacation 58, which eventually turned into the script for the first movie in the Vacation franchise. You can even see a reference to Hughes' original article in the film itself. While Clark is trapped in the attic watching home movies, he picks up a canister labeled Xmas 59. Most viewers recognize Brian Doyle Murray as Clark's boss, Frank Shirley. But only diehard vacation fans will remember him from the first film. He played the clerk at Camp Comfort, a campsite the Griswolds stayed at. Let me get this straight. We have to change the actors who play the kids in every movie, but Brian Doyle Murray gets to play two characters? Well, at least his role in the first film is short, and he plays Shirley too perfectly to have cast anybody else. As I mentioned in the last episode of What You Didn't Know, Christmas Vacation was filmed on the back lot at Warner Brothers Studios along with many other movies. In fact, the house that the Griswolds' neighbors, Todd and Margot, live in is the same house that the Murtaugh family lives in in the Lethal Weapon movies. And considering the lights you see on the Murtaugh house, it's not crazy to say that that should count as a Christmas movie, too. Lastly, who could discuss Christmas Vacation without mentioning the havoc that ensues at the end of the film? One of the most memorable scenes is after Clark chops down the tree in his front yard to replace the one Uncle Lewis burned down. Not surprisingly, he ends up bringing in a wild squirrel to his house. Well, filming with a wild squirrel isn't all that easy. Jeremiah Chechik had a trained squirrel prepared to film with, but on the day of shooting, the production's animal handler announced that the squirrel had died earlier that morning. In order to stay on track with their filming schedule, the crew found a squirrel, but it was not trained for film sets. In the end, I'm sure all this did was add a little more authenticity to the chaos. Go on. Well, there you go, everybody. That's what you didn't know about Christmas Vacation. Where do you rank this movie in your holiday favorites? It's up there for me. I watch it probably 30 times between Thanksgiving and Christmas, so it holds a special place in my heart. But let me know if there's any movies you want me to do next, and of course, I'll see you later.